it's a great pleasure to be able with Astrid Haas to co-chair this session on a theme that has been talked about for some time throughout the last two days, not to mention the 15 years of urban age work, which is we can talk about cities, how they change, but how are we going to pay for it, which is one big issue. So we'll come to that. I just wanted to say something as a connection between where we were in the last two hours in this room and where we are now, which is um, maybe we should rename the urban age as uh, urban therapy. Uh, and uh, um, in, in so far as to actually sit here and uh, with like-minded colleagues, everyone on equal footing, and share our complexities and difficulties in a way that was uh, witnessed before uh, was, I think, important for all of us. And I just wanted to repeat one of the things said right at the beginning of this conference, which Anna and I and Philip have been talking about, which is all we can do in an event like this is offer a mirror on what is happening in your own context. And I thought that was a very powerful moment, and I hope we can continue uh, in that spirit. So um, just with that reflection, I will pass on to Astrid, who will uh, introduce the themes of the afternoon. Thank you. Great. Thanks, uh, Ricky. Good afternoon, everyone. I didn't hear. In Uganda, we use this particularly after lunch so that we can make sure everyone is awake. So good afternoon, everyone. Excellent. Okay, so um, as Ricky has said, um, and Vera said very aptly this morning, if we just reflect on the past days and on the presentations we've seen, housing, transport, services, these all need money. And the question is, where is this money going to come from? We've had um, different thoughts about it sort of peppered across different sessions, but this panel today is really going to sort of dig deep into this question. And its importance was already reflected in the first keynote presentations. We saw that Africa is really still at the beginning of its urbanization path. These cities are going to explode. So even whatever deficit we have right now, that deficit is just going to keep growing. And aside from that, and I think in Christian's presentation yesterday on Kigali, he mentioned this very well, is that it's also, so it's one side building for the city that is still to come, it's the other side retrofitting the city that is already there. A characteristic of many African cities is that the people have come before the infrastructure could be built. And what does that mean? It means it's even more expensive to build that infrastructure. Evidence shows it's probably up to three times more expensive. In places like Kampala, where we have very high compensation costs, it could be even more than that. So. I was uh, reflecting on, on, on the different presentations, as you can tell. And uh, actually, uh, Parks, who has very kindly joined our panel today, um, one thing that you said yesterday was very interesting to me. When you sort of listed the financing challenges, you started with how a city is going to raise their own source revenue. Many cities I work with, that's only sort of now coming to the forefront. It used to be the narrative was, how are we going to get the national government to give us more money? And I think the realization has come that that money is not going to be forthcoming very much. So now cities are starting to be more inward looking and saying, what is it that we can do ourselves? Um, in this respect, um, I am going to make a gross generalization, which was, uh, I think Sue mentioned on her panel we shouldn't do, which is there's one thing that binds all African cities. And in fact, there's one thing that binds African cities with cities everywhere else in the world. And that is, People don't like to pay taxes, but they want the services. And so the first part of this panel is going to start thinking about, from a public sector official's perspective, how are we going to figure out, or how do we build that social contract with people? How do we raise money within inside our own countries and our own cities for this? And you know, again, same caveat as Vernon, I am an economist. I like you know, to simplify things. In theory, this looks very easy. But in practice, the political economy of tax reform or any sort of finance reform is difficult. And for that reason, I'm very honored to be joined by two people who have managed to do this to levels that have been probably unprecedented in, in, in some senses. So uh, Tunde, from who, when he was governor of Lagos, pretty much turned around sort of property tax in Lagos. Uh, and Jennifer Musisi. Uh, the executive director of the Kampala Capital City Authority, who within five years 
just through reforms on tax administration, managed to increase their own source revenue by over 180%. So uh, Tunde is now in a national position. He's now uh, Minister of uh, Power, Housing, and, and Works. And so he's now going to reflect from that perspective, from a far broader country perspective, what it means to have infrastructure investment in cities. That will be followed by Jennifer, who's going to now dig down into what it means actually as a city leader to raise these finances. <laughs>